I was sharing yesterday, one of the tools, the basketball. So you can start with the bad news. So you have said, uh, you can say, I have good news and bad, bad news for you. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, you, you can just, you know, again, uh, playing uh, basketball, you can say, hey, wait, well, by the way, this ball reminds me of something very important that I would want to share with you. Now have a look at this. So that's the good thing with basketball. I tried to look at soccer ball or volleyball. It's different. It's not like this. It's different, no? So this is something yeah, interesting. So it's like the bridge illustration. So what's the bad news? The Bible says, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. So you're here, and th that's, the holy, that's the holy God. So there's a problem. There's a gap. And the Bible says, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, and that will result to death. You know? So you can, you can add more verses. It's, it doesn't matter. That's the main thing, right? And then, but the good news is, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, begotten Son, that to every believer in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so, God, uh, to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, addressed the problem of death. Now we can uh, live because of what Christ has done. So, what do you need to do? You just have to cross over. Cross over. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed from death to life. So where are you? Are you here or are you here? And just say, well, all you need to do is to recognize that you're a sinner, that there's a holy God, there's a God, you cannot save yourself. But God, because of his love, sent his only Jesus, son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross in our place. So there's a bridge now. God created a bridge that we cannot, we cannot create, we cannot make. So he made a way for us. So if you are here and you want to, to be reconciled with God and to, be, to have that assurance that you have eternal life, then you just have to cross over. And how do you do that? You just say, God, I have sinned against you. Uh, please forgive me. I now receive Christ as my Savior and Lord. And thank you for what you know, Christ has done for me on the cross. I, I mean, you can just work on that and there's the gospel one minute two minutes three minutes five minutes it depends can share the gospel and this would be attractive for by basketball enthusiasts or sports guys right and there's even the, uh what do you call this just yeah this one from bad good to crossover okay you can try to go to this website the, the one who developed this is a good friend of mine Oh, you can, you can, you can learn uh, many things from there. Crossoverworld.com. Very simple, right? Yeah. So, nobody can say, I don't know how to share. There is actually an application that you can download from the Play Store. And it's called The Story of Hope. The Story of Hope. Yeah. So you can now try to download that. And then actually, uh, there is there the story of hope condensed. So you can click that. There are actually 20 stories from creation up, up to Christ. So it's a story for those who don't know the Bible and cannot appreciate the Bible, he can appreciate here the Bible because he can, you can see the connection from Genesis onwards. 20 stories that can also be an evangelistic tool to share. So, all you need to do is that. So, in the beginning, there was God, no? So, it, and then it's, it, it, you show, it shows creation. God created the heavens and the earth. So, you, you just have to, to work on the 20 20 stories and then that's where you that's what you need to say so it's not that long but you can see the keywords give pictures and keywords they have 50 stories they have 100 stories but that you have to pay but the 20 is free it's condensed 
but that's what that's just what you need to share and then uh, of course there's chronological bridge to life you click that that's an evangelistic tool so you have four from the old testament and four from the new testament and then all you need to do is do like that so first you talk about the introduction you talk about god man sin death christ and then in fact you can press faith so it go, goes to faith you press man and it goes to man you press christ it goes to christ no so the story of hope try to download it uh later when you have access to the net okay now another thing uh which is also cool is share your faith share your faith okay now the good thing here is you can like just press start god loves us and wants to have a relationship with us he wants to help us on our journey through life and into eternity so and then you just press however we have chosen to go our own way our sins have caused a separation between god and us and then next So anyway, that's it. If you don't know how to say, let your phone or your iPad say it. Of course, you can take out the, the audio. You can say it in your own words. So you can just, uh, the Bible is there, the different verses, and then, yeah. Uh, so it's Most really nice. Are aware of the separation. However, we have chosen to, God loves us and wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to help us on our journey through life and Okay, anyway, share it. So these are two of the many. Actually, there are a lot that you can use. But these are the handy ones that I have seen. And really nice ones too. You know, our kids, they, they have gadgets. And then they, they just use it for games. Train your kids when they are still young to share. And it, will always, it can be a lifestyle already when they are young. So you don't have a problem when they grow old. And teach them to disciple. Young kids can disciple others. We have seen that. We have tried that actually. Huh? So our concept because of discipleship is we need to know a lot before we can disciple. But you just need to know little and share it with others. So one lesson ahead would, would, would be good. Because children also are workers in the harvest. If you believe your children have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Great Commission is also for them. In fact, the best is to start when they are younger. So when you go back to your churches as you prepare for the mission field, begin training the, the kids, younger kids. Because uh, if that will be the lifestyle, then eventually the rest of the church you know, we'll do it. So, questions? Uh, we'll do the first one, the kids. Uh, is it okay if a nine-year-old will baptize someone? Nine-year-old? We'll baptize someone? Yeah. Because I think, remember, um, uh, a Jew brought, he, he shared to us that his, his, his son, who should have been baptized nine people. Well, uh, the first question is, what is the purpose of baptism? Baptism is not for us to be saved. Baptism is a public declaration. It's telling the world, I, I used to be a sinner, but now I am saved by grace. And now I want to tell the world that I have received Christ, and I have surrendered my life to Christ. And therefore, it's not what I want, but it's what He wants. It's not where I, I want to go, but it's where He wants me to go. So you, it, it, it's that, that's the public declaration. That's actually what we meant by baptism. That we die to ourselves and just tell the world we are now living for Christ. But sometimes this is not understood in our churches. 
So they baptize because everybody are baptized. <laughs> but they have not understood what real baptism is. And others for membership. No, that's why baptismal instruction is very critical. It does not have to be long. But they have to understand it's a public declaration saying that I am a sinner but now saved by grace. And from now on, I'm no longer my own but I'm God's. And it's only what He wants in my life that should take place. You know, it's very interesting. If you try to look at old films, movie, uh, war films, uh, the, the British Army, the commander will say, Forward, march! Three, four. And then what do we do when we want to go back? To the rear march, right? We do to the rear march like that? Yeah. Left, yeah, yeah. To the forward march. To the rear march. And then we do like this. But if you try to watch British Army old films, the old films, the commander will say, Forward, march! One, two, three, four. Repent! Repent. repent. The command is repent, not not to the rear march. Repent, meaning 180 degrees. But very interesting. Yeah. So that it's no longer what we want to do, but to repent. Repent means to to stop doing what we have been doing in the past that is not pleasing God. Doing here, right? We stop doing the things in the past that is not pleasing to God. Repent means to do what God wants us to do. That's, that's baptism actually. The essence of baptism. Recognizing the Lordship of Christ. So sometimes it's, you know, your people are proud. You know, I have baptized or my nine-year-old son have baptized. What's really the motivation behind? Are we proud or we are just great? Well, I'm just grateful that my son was able to, you know, Anyway, that's a big issue now in the Christian world, actually. Be, uh, be, uh, because they said, only ordained ministers can actually baptize. You know? But uh, if you try to look at Matthew 28, this, even in the Southern Baptists, they are the biggest in the U.S. No? But they are uh, like half are, are in agreement, half are not. So, so <laughs> they, they said, well, only ordained has, uh, sh should be able to do it. But others said, well, look at the Great Commission. What is the mandate there? Go and make disciples of all nations. It's given to all Christians, right? And then it, it continues and, and it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father. It never said for pastors only. But for the, the making of disciples, you have to baptize, you have to teach them, you have to... You know, so that's the contention of the other side. That's why they said any believer can actually baptize somebody. So actually, that, that video you saw yesterday was a Southern Bap uh, ministry, actually. And so you, you have seen the guy baptized, no? Uh, yeah, but, but anyway, for me, uh, this is my stand. There are places that there are no pastors. If there are no pastors and they are ready, then uh, I don't think there will be a problem. But if there are pastors, like in our churches here, we need to still recognize the pastors in the institution that we are part of. So uh, we would still, you know, tell the pastor, Pastor, I have a disciple and ready to be baptized. And so tell the pastor to, to, to do the baptism. And you may assist. In fact, other pastors now, that's, the how, that's how they encourage the church. Okay, so if you have discipled somebody, they came to, to Christ your witness and disciple them, and if they're ready for water baptism, tell me. So I'll give the instructions uh, why they are supposed to do that. And then I will baptize and you assist. Mm -hmm. So it encourages the, the congregation. You know, now, as you lead people, you will assist. But you have to respect the pastor. So you cannot say, hey, the Bible says, go make disciples. This is for me so I can do it. I don't need the pastor. No, no, no. We have to respect. Yeah. So, but in cases that there are no pastors, then I don't think that's a problem. Just like communion. No? They said it should re be real wine. And it should be real ostias. Oh, unleavened bread. Ostias, hindi nga pwede. So, so uh, many are, but, but there are places they have nothing. No wine, no nothing. So all they have is coconut. So they have the coconut juice and the coconut meat for their communion. Because do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. 
it's a commemoration. It's not the, the yeah. It, it, so that's why the, the bottom line is what is the purpose? Okay? Coconut juice. Uh, I know, I know, Sam. I mean, if there is really nothing, what can you do? Like baptism. If you're in the desert. That's why spring, others, they sprinkle. Of course, the Presbyterians, even they have water, they just sprinkle. That's their practice. So they, that's what they call contextualization. Now you have to adapt to the system and the situation. Okay, so let's just review some of the mindsets. Uh, I'll show you one evangelism tool that, uh, that's very basic actually, to help us in whatever tool we will be using. So our mindset again, we want to be great commission Christians, right? Yes. And, and uh, to be as such, uh, you need to be royal priests. Remember, we are royal priests and we are full-time Christians. You cannot be part-time Christian. Christian only on Sunday. No, because a full-time Christian, as a royal priest, you are full-time. And then there should always be consciousness of the presence of God wherever you are. One step closer missions, those, those principles, right? Now, wherever God brings you, where you live, where you work, where you study, or that day, wherever God brings you, whoever you will engage, you can bring people one step closer to Him. Meaning God is at work, conscious of, of the presence of God. And then we are wired for the harvest. Meaning it's really God's plan for us as God's children to be involved in the harvest. So we have to always bear that in mind. We are wired for the harvest. No? And then we, there are extraordinary people that are ready for the gospel. Not, not, not all people will resist. Open times when we think of sharing the gospel, oh no, they may, that guy may resist. Maybe no, not, not that one. Until you end up doing nothing. <laughs> but if you believe that there are people that are ready, then, you know, by all means, Lord, is this guy ready? Is this, yeah? And then uh, share the gospel. Many testimonies, you know. Uh, there was, I mean, not just one, but many testimonies of those who are planning to commit suicide. But somebody took the time to talk to them and they came to Christ and they said, I was about to commit suicide. Many testimonies like this. So God is really at work. There are extraordinary people that are ready for the gospel. And remember the method, the methodology, we should always be intentional. And then small group is still the best. No? So intentional, that's why we have company tree. Because that can be very intentional every week. You really do that. And then uh, you also do it in a small group. And then what is your goal? To contribute to a church planting movement. Not just to win souls. Not just to disciple somebody. But to disciple somebody who will disciple another person that will also have the capacity to disciple and disciple. So you multiply disciples and eventually you see churches planted and as you do that you're contributing to a church planting movement and then God can use me to impact lives and communities Amen. we always have to believe God uh, that we are extraordinary people that, uh, that, that we are royal priests and God can use us to impact lives and communities if God used Abdul if God used Bioli if God used those uh, in the stories that we have heard, God can actually use us. Don't underestimate yourself. And then there should be focus on the unreached. We need to make sure that there is focus on the unreached peoples. Uh, remember Matthew 24, 14, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And remember, nations means people group. All the people groups in the world sh should be given the opportunity to hear the gospel. And then Jesus Christ will come again. And then, of course, every believer is a minister, Ephesians 4. And because every believer is a minister, every believer must be a disciple maker. Because making disciples is one of the works of the ministry, right? Evangelizing is one of the works of the ministry. As a minister, you, you, you evangelize. As a minister, you make disciples. And therefore, every believer... As we faithfully make disciples and multiply disciples, 
that will result actually in catalyzing a disciple-making movement. Now, every new believer so can be a start of a new church. Again, it will be a process. It will take time. But if this is our mindset, we will do everything to follow up the new believer because that can be a start of a new church. So as the new believer is discipled, trained, equipped, that new believer will disciple and multiply disciples, and in the process, a church can be planted. So we can say a new believer can actually be a church planter. And then we can say that a, church, a, a new believer can actually catalyze a church planting movement. Because the church you planted will be planting churches. Who will be planting churches? Who will be planting churches? And there you see a church planting movement. Okay? So I hope this will always, I, they said repetition will help us really remember it. So, so in fact, uh, since yesterday, I think you heard it 28 times already. <laughs> According to experts, if you hear something 28 times, you will never forget it. Yeah. So, I don't know, if that's 27 times, then we need to do it one more. <laughs> but anyway, that should be... I, I